When I was 16, the thing that I was really obsessed about was geometry. Well, actually, of course, I was really obsessed about girls. But my social skills were such that I had about 99% of my time to be spent on geometry. I'm excited by both the theory and by the practical application. And the interface between the two is um, a lot of fun. So I actually got a phone call from the governor saying, was there some way in which I could help by designing an auction which would more effectively get money out to the, the banks and building society that really needed it. I think the Bank of England was imaginative in saying, we need to get hold of a, one of the best academics in the world and get him to help us solve this problem. One of the nice things about working in the university is that I can feel comfortable giving some of my time for free to institutions like the Bank of England and to government departments and charities and so on. There's always a tension between the very beautiful, precise theory of mathematics and how you take that to a much messier real world. But the excitement is trying to understand the real world, what's, what are the, really, the underlying forces, then seeing how you can mathematically model those and actually doing something with them. As the crisis that began in 2007 got worse, nearly all central banks found that they were lending money to the banking system not just against the collateral of very low risk securities, government bonds, but also against risky securities. So I originally started working for the Bank of England because the central bank was having trouble getting funds to the banks and building societies that needed them. I mean, it was the fear that these banks didn't have enough funds that were leading to bank runs. If we were planning to lend 100 billion in total, we need to decide how much would we lend against gilts, how much would we lend against the riskier securities. This was a complicated problem in the design of auctions. TT cabinet, as you see it there, 50 up here, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90 pounds, any more than 90 pounds, what about This is a class of problem that we'd studied before. Um, so, for example, seven years earlier, I had, with Ken Binmore, run the UK's 3G auction. We took seven weeks, I think, on that occasion. When you were worried about bank runs, you've got more like seven seconds than seven weeks. So the question then became, how can we collapse that kind of process into a very tiny amount of time? 550 with you. Uh, well, we're trying to, to take a lot of bids from a lot of different people and pare them down to a simple aggregate decision. And the answer that I came up with for that was essentially to ask the bidders, that is the banks and building societies, tell us something about their preferences. In fact, enough about their preferences that I could then work out how a long multi-round process would work. And I could then plug in their preferences into a system, it's a very simple computer model, and spit out the answers and tell us what would have happened if we had the full seven week process. So what we do is we can represent those preferences in graphs in effect and then we can work with those graphs. What's really exciting is that geometry turns out to be very valuable in solving problems like the Bank of England and many other problems of resource allocation. If I am allocating a bowl of fruit and there's oranges, apples, bananas, grapefruit, grapes, that's five different kinds of fruit and so I'm actually going to need to work in five dimensions to cope with the fact that I need to express trade-offs, preferences between five different things. Five, 90. 90 and bid at 90 in front, five, 100. I would then be asking you questions like, how many grapes is an apple worth to you? Are you happy to have one orange on its own? Or would you insist on having a pair of oranges if you get either because you happen to have two kids and you really want to have the same pieces of fruit because you take home different pieces of fruit, they'll fight over it. 90. 90 pounds, any more at 90 for the So I'm starting off in five dimensions. Nevertheless, we have a clearly defined set of rules by which we can transform these pictures of people's preferences and understand, in the end, how to efficiently divide up this bowl of food. 600. 600. 
At 600, all done at 600, thank you. I am now, with my colleague Elizabeth Baldwin, taking tropical geometry that mathematicians only invented about 10 years ago and using it now to work out how to more efficiently allocate um, resources to the Bank of England and um, the Department of Energy and Climate Change has asked us to look into how they can do what they're doing better and we'll be using those techniques there we hope. It would be nice if the government and others understood more the value of fundamental academic research and how really valuable it can be almost immediately in the real world.